Most years, we give out bag tags and offer blessings for backpacks, laptop, and messenger bags, and purses carried back and forth to school, college, graduate school, or the library. We talk about how the bags will contain work to be done, work that's returned, books to be read, tools to complete homework. They will carry lesson plans and to-do lists, half-formed ideas, and full-length research papers, textbooks and articles, snacks and lunches. We celebrate the way which wrappers and long-forgotten crumbs fill the empty spaces and notebooks, pencils, pens, crayons, scissors, glue sticks, and other items used for schoolwork will find their way in and out of these bags. We acknowledge that on some days, so much stuff fills the bags that the person who must carry it may find it difficult to walk, while on other days, they will be light and nearly empty. We take the time to do this each year because our bags represent the work required of students and teachers heading into a new academic year. We bless our bags as a reminder that in our work as well as in our joy, we carry the strength, hope, and love of our community with us. Of course, this year, there are no bags. Because of COVID, most of us are doing our learning and our teaching from home, looking at a screen, just like we are going to church at home, looking at a screen. This is not easy. People are not meant to learn in two dimensions. We're meant to play and hug and experience the world with all of our senses, not just our eyes and our ears. So both teaching and learning are harder than ever, but we want you to remember in these strange times where keeping each other safe means doing things differently, that you are held in the love of this community and that you hold our Unitarian Universalist values in your heart. Rather than sending bag tags, we're going to send you all chalice decals that you can stick on your laptop or tablet. They are beautiful. We're putting a Google link in the chat. If you can specify for us how many decals you'd like for your family, and we even have a list of what they look like, so you can see the stickers there and tell us which ones you'd like and then enter your address and we'll make sure you get the decals in the mail. We will send them to you and you can stick them on any device that you find supports your learning and growing. And every time you see it, you can remember that your church community loves you and supports you. You could even stick a decal on a journal or a sketch pad. This is the blessing we have said over the decals. May you feel curiosity all your days. May your imagination catch fire. May you find courage when it's necessary. May confusion lead to better questions. May you feel heard and seen. May you hear and see others. May you speak up for those who are not heard, who are not seen. May you feel compassion toward those around you and they toward you. Above all, may you feel compassion and be kind to yourselves in these strange and really challenging times. As your spirit's home, we are made stronger when you share what you learn. We ask you to bring what you learn of the world back to our community. If you agree, say, we will or you can type it into the chat. We are all learning for as long as we are living. This is one of the core values of our faith, but this year especially, we need to find ways to learn gently. Don't force it. Let your growth unfold naturally like a plant. Go easy, take lots of breaks. If you get frustrated with yourselves or with each other, it's okay to stop for a while, breathe, do something different, have a snack or a cup of tea or water. Also go outside when you can. Fresh air and nature are our best medicine. Move your bodies, 
hug your pets and know always that you are so very, very loved. Amen and blessed be. Let's just start by sharing your name and the level at which you teach. Okay. Uh, Jamie Derrick, and uh, I teach at the university level. So I teach undergraduate classes, people ages 18 to 25, sometimes older, but that's the bulk. Uh, my name is Brandy Urie, and I teach kindergarten. I'm Nancy Nelson, and I teach second grade in Pullman at Franklin Elementary. Thanks. Tom Salisbury, and I'm associate professor at Washington State University in the College of Education. My name is Susan Thompson, and I am a general music teacher, so that means teaching kindergarten through sixth grade. Um, I also have taught band and choir. Uh, and this year, with the pandemic, I'm going to be teaching online kindergarten. <laughs> Leanne Parker, I'm a clinical psychologist, and I teach at Lewis Clark State College. And what led you to answer the call to teach? Oh, I feel like I was born to be a kindergarten teacher. Um, I've always kind of naturally been led to uh, help people who are struggling with things that I already understood. Um, and I loved that moment of when it clicked, I got addicted to that. So really, that's especially why I like kindergarten, because when, when something that they've been struggling with clicks and that light goes off, there is just no better feeling in the world. Well, it was interesting when I saw the question call, like I wasn't called to teach. It's interesting. I was called to learn. And um, the reason I went into graduate school was really because I was so curious about learning and I just kept going and ended up with a PhD. I didn't actually know exactly what I was doing as I went along. I'm the first person in my family to get a PhD, so I didn't have a lot of information. I was just following my nose, like what was interesting. And then when I was finished, I had choices to make. And I realized as, after I was finished, like I would love to share my love of learning with other people. I had had a little bit of experience doing public speaking in some of the nonprofits that I worked in, and I really enjoyed that. And so I, that made me start thinking about teaching. I come from a long line of teachers, K-12 teachers, but I didn't, never had any inclination for K-12. And then, ironically, as I was thinking about this, I was living in Stanton, Virginia, and I was attending the Waynesboro UU Fellowship, and there was some faculty members there, and I was talking to one of them about, you know, teaching and trying to get into higher education, and one just said, oh, who am I kidding? It's the bomb. Absolutely do it. It's great. <laughs> and that just kind of, that kind of clinched it for me. Um, the supportive teachers that came before, you know, I, I don't think I ever would have gone into teaching if it wasn't for the people who taught me so well and um, encouraged so much passion in education and, and wanting to learn more. Um, I think that that sense, that desire to um, teach comes from that desire to keep learning. Um, when the kids were born, when Kate, when Amanda was born, I decided to stay home because frankly, it looked like more fun. <laughs> And I was right, it really was. And as part of that, um, especially when Kate came along, there was a parent-run nursery school co-op. And in fact, Jill and Tim had kids in it too. And that's where I learned how to like parent slash teach other people's children. And you learn that, that the trick is you have to just think of them as yours for that time that they're with you. And suddenly you have all these more children that belong to you and that you're just sort of borrowing them, but you still have to like think of them as these little people that you want to grow and prosper and you're so interested in what they're doing at this moment. And that's a really fascinating thing to do is to have all these kids. <laughs> Initially, I was, I mean, I had always been in school um, and I really wanted to, to be out of school and I wanted to, I wanted to explore like myself, you know, and I wanted to 
And I also wanted to travel because my first teaching was abroad. And um, so all those things were sort of combined in and of themselves. Like I was, it, to me, it was a big adventure. Like I'm going to go connect with people and and places and do things that I I had never done or dreamed about. And so, who are some of the teachers who most inspired you along your journey? So I got a shout out to Mr. Rogers, um, the original virtual teacher. He knew how to talk to kids. He knew how to straightforward approach the important conversations. And I love Fred Rogers. Um, a fictional character I draw a lot of inspiration from would be Ms. Frizzle. I like to make mistakes, get messy. I like to wear crazy dresses. Um, real world teachers that have inspired me um, would be uh, like Chris Freeland or Maureen Schroeder, the very first kindergarten teachers who took me into their classroom. Uh, they worked for the Moscow School District for 20 and uh, 30 years respectively. Um, their compassion and the way that they worked with children and the way that they were willing to take on college students like me, teaching college students how to teach kindergartners all at the same time and seeing their balance and their love and their enthusiasm, I think was a major inspiration for me to really stick to that lower elementary age. Um, I have a particularly fond memory of my sixth grade teacher, Mrs. Brock who was um, an elderly lady. I don't think she even taught that much longer after I uh, went through her class, but um, she used to invite me over to her house and you know, we, me and a, usually a friend would go and make cookies or help with gardening or it was like non-school related stuff. We were just hanging out. She was being mater maternal, motherly. And um, I, I don't know why I absorbed that. I really grew as a student in her class. I learned a lot about um, organization and creativity. And she also taught me a, a really important lesson about being a good person. I was being really mean to a kid in class, uh, which is really weird to, for me to think about because I was usually the kind kid. But there was a kid I was being mean to. And my teacher caught me and she intervened in the kindest, most respectful way, which I learned a lot about. I learned how important it is like never to be mean. And also, if you're going to uh, help somebody, support somebody to be a better version of themselves, to do that in a kind and respectful way, because the learning isn't shameful then it's an invitation to be more so she's been she was an inspiration to me but the ones that really really inspired me um, were my middle school and high school choir teachers makes sense going into music um, miss cogdill and mrs Steele were were it i mean i spent um too many class periods with mrs Steele in in high school um, she was a hugely formative person, um, incredibly strong-willed, knew what she wanted, and had very high expectations, but was incredibly passionate and compassionate, um, and really inspired great musicians and also just great people. Um, I had high school teachers. I remember Mrs. Peterson. She was my history social studies teacher. Um, she really challenged me. I mean, she was so smart, and she is hot in all these really difficult places to talk about teaching in the she called it the reform school. <laughs> and um, so I learned all about uh, Marxism and uh, Russian history and all of these really wild, pretty out there things. And she would challenge us, you know, and I loved that. Um, I, had a, um, I had a professor in graduate school who also, I think, believed that cultivating relationship was the path to learning and you know I was in a clinical psychology program so you would think all the faculty would sort of emphasize relationship and connection but they did not <laughs> and she was also um, patient and kind and challenging and wanted to know me as a person and not just my clinical skills or my writing skills or anything like that um, she was very inspiring. Yeah, she touched me deeply about the kind of uh, professor that I wanted to be. 
But I think the teachers who've had the most impact on me in the practice in my classroom are probably the teachers I've watched teach. Um, and Marcia Anderson is probably, that was Kate's first grade teacher. Um, I, she let me come in her classroom and watch her teach reading and watch her teach art um, at Russell Elementary. And that really made a big difference. And Tina Woods, who is somebody who taught Amanda, um, I know a lot of people really were fascinated by how she connected with her kids and kind of the little world that she made out in the portable. She's kind of showed me that, um, that when you, you're creating a universe in a classroom and you have the power to make it a very positive universe. So, so what's changed for you since March? Um, I'm feeling way more sensitive, like, when I'm with my students, you know, sometimes I'd be looking at the clock, you know, like, oh, we're going to be here. You know, good classes, time goes really quickly. Um, but there's no, like, filler time. There's no, it's like we're together and it's really intense. And I know that when they came, they came because they really wanted to be there. Um, it's like just the level of intentionality is just way higher. Like, I got to think through everything. Like, I can't just put students in groups. I got to think about how it is that I'm going to connect people <laughs> who are on different sides of the state, you know, or the world right now. I taught a class yesterday, got folks all around the world. You know, how do I get them together? Um, I haven't had a hug in so long. And it's, <laughs> it's funny. You, you think sometimes it would feel so good to be able to walk through a room without being grabbed on the leg. But I think I miss that most. Um, the being able to reach out and grab a hand to pat a back. I mean, I was able to still connect with my kids. I did lots of video. I wrote letters. We, I mean, there, virtual connections are better than no connections at all, but it still doesn't fulfill that need for touch. I, Everything went to Zoom, so it's this kind of exchange. And uh, that means that I am in people's homes and lives as I'm teaching and they're in mine. So, and I, I, I it only recently did I have a screen. Uh, I did that because I was having trouble with lighting behind, but like it's, this is my room, you know, this is, so they were in my room and I was in theirs. And so it just creates this like intimacy, which shows up in the teaching. Uh, it's really become much more personal, much more, um, it's learning the topic and it's it's connecting as people because we really need to be together during these times in personal ways when your when your whole philosophy of teaching rests on a foundation of connection and you've always counted on face to face connection to do that it is really upended it's really upended the relationship for me I have taught online because you sort of have to be able to do that these days. It is not a modality that I particularly enjoy. Relationships can be formed, but I've never been able to create a relationship online that was the same as that face-to-face -face contact. Um, especially there are relationships that are cultivated in the classroom just because something's going on and I notice a reaction a student is having across the room and I can immediately check in and say, it looks like something's going on or, you know, what's happening. And that immediate, like they notice that I notice something's going on and I'm interested real time in how things are. You, you can't do that online. Having, having such a narrow window to make relationships in is the hardest thing. We just have these really slivers of, of interaction. And you have, I have to be really thoughtful about what am I gonna do with these minutes, with this email, with this thing, with this little lesson, electronic lesson. How can I sort of breathe on it and get it to have a spark of life that can help form the connection? Um, whereas before I could get away with, you know, just the, the sort of little, even like raising your eyebrows at a kid and just like, you know, nodding your head at somebody or saying, oh, I think you should read this or, you know, that exchange of 
what did you notice? Um, what are you wondering about? It's really a lot harder to have those. Obviously, a lot has changed for me in that I'm not teaching the content that I'm, I'm comfortable teaching or that I'm used to teaching. Um, and my whole style of teaching has always revolved around touch, has always revolved around play and movement, lots of singing and loud and sharing of instruments, you know, all things that are not, you know, responsible to do right now. Have there been any unexpected gifts or blessings? Um, I've realized that you can't, there's a lot of those, those little slivers of interaction exist in a lot of different forms. And anytime you see one, you have to grab it and pick it up. For me, like I'm a psychologist, right? And so I'm really dedicated to people being well and whole and resilient. And so all of these like uh, kind of nuances and differences in the way that the teaching was happening supported well-being. So it really felt in alignment with my kind of my vision for the work that I do. Well, I think the only thing that comes to mind is the, the kindness and the grace that everybody has been trying to extend to each other. Me to students, students to me. Um, I gave all my students my cell phone number, which I had never done before back in the spring because I wanted them to be able to reach out to me as quickly as possible if they needed to, and not one person abused it at all. Um, I've seen some really cool progress. Um, so much of our school, so much of our um, educational world is pushing towards uh, differentiation and making sure that kids who are at different levels can grow at their own pace. And I think that this online learning, a lot of it really allows for that to happen. Um, I can record a short video and a kid who gets it fast can watch it once and a kid who needs more times can watch it 50 times and it, and it doesn't matter. You know, they can take the time that they need to learn. For, for me, this summer was, it was a really nice summer, even though it was financially a major blow because I didn't get the um, summer income that I had hoped for. At least it was furloughed for, um, a, you know, a month. So financially, it was pretty brutal, but we had all this time to sit at home, and we would like, you know, work in the garden or just sit outside, and it was a really beautiful summer. Um, more time at home has been really helpful. I've I've really grown my relationship with my daughter and my son and my husband um, because we had to learn how to work around each other and school around each other and learning um, really open communication and <laughs> boundary respectfulness. It, 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 there was a gift in teaching from home for that short time in, for my family. And really professionally, I feel like we've grown really tight among um, the teachers. I know my kindergarten team, there are three of us, and we, we were texting, we were calling, we were just in constant communication and always trying to figure out the best way to you know, hit this, that, or the other. And I found that as we were pulled apart, our teams really pulled together. And that was a, an unexpected gift to see how we all found ways to reach out and still meet our kids' needs together. So what do you love most about teaching? Um, it's, it's learning to know the people, learning to know the kids and who they are and building that relationship and kind of learning to see things through their eyes. Um, when I was a reporter before, to be a really good reporter, you have to know how your messages are being received on the other end. And to be, I think, an effective teacher, you always have to be trying to see it through their eyes. What are they understanding? And then how do you, how do you adjust yourself? I like seeing people get caught on fire by something, you know, like, I have so many people who will say, I didn't even know I was interested in this topic. And all of a sudden, it's all I want to read about and think about. And, and it's what I'm going to do with my life. You know, that doesn't happen with everybody, but it happens off enough that I feel I'm just like, wow. It's like, um, 
midwifery, right? Like it's bringing something new, helping, assisting, being a part of bringing something new alive in someone. And I love that process. Um, the thing that has always just made my heart go, yes, are those light bulb moments that you get, especially, especially with littles, but truthfully all the way in any grade, um, where they get something for the first time. And it can be a content related thing, or it can be, Mrs. Thompson, I remembered to wash my hands. Or it can be, Mrs. Thompson, I held the door for my friend. Um, it's those light bulb moments where they get it and they just are so excited and the joy just sparkles in their eyes. <laughs> I love that. I love facilitating. That, that to me is what I love the most about it, is it isn't, the, isn't like the pontificating, <laughs> right? the, the explaining. It's more um, the connection. That, that to me is what's so cool. And then learning from my students, I love that. That's hands down the most, most fun thing. It always has been um, at whatever level, you know, grade level, content, whatever I'm teaching. It's always been, I love learning from my students. They never bore me ever, you know, ever. After 32 years, I don't know, I just think it's weird. But I, I tell my students, and I do teacher education, so it's like I love reading what people write. Even if it's really not so good, <laughs> I still, it's because it's a window into that person, right? So that to me is what I love about it. In, my, in every personal statement that I've ever had to submit for a teaching job, I always emphasize the relationship aspect that students can learn content, they can learn how to apply content, they can become professionals in their own right, but there is nothing like seeing a student's eyes light up with understanding when they finally get something or the light bulb goes off and you feel like you had a hand in that. Oh, the connection. And you know, especially with kindergarten, it's not just kids that I'm connecting with um, because really you teach the parents too. a lot of times you're either their very first baby or you're their very last baby and they care very much who you are and how you are with them and the the give and the take is is with the parents as much as it is with the kids and it's so boy they just have no holds on their love they are so open to what you want to share and what you want to give. And that, that, that connection with people, it just, it, it drives me and it, and it energizes me and it gives me hope for the future.